Thank you for the, uh, the passport back into town. Thank you, folks. Please sit down. Thank you very, very much. I, uh, it's kind of nostalgic coming back to uh, coming in through the courthouse. Uh, uh, some of you were around in uh, Newcastle back in 1973 when almost uh, 10,000 people in a torchlight parade headed down from the old high school uh, to, uh, uh, to the closing night. I, I miss those days when we had that, uh, that, uh, that tradition of ending every campaign with the torchlight parade here in Newcastle. And, um, and it was, uh, uh, and so many people in this town uh, that were from the Toners to the Quillins to the Szymanski, are the reason why I, I held public office in the first place. So it's, it's always good to come home, Mr. Mayor, and thank you. And Ken, uh, thank you. Ken Salazar has, uh, uh, has been a friend, and we, all, we use that phrase lightly. You know, we say, so-and-so is my friend. But a friend is someone who, uh, who knows sometimes that uh, part of the deal is uh, you make a commitment, and even after you make the commitment, when the circumstances change and it's not in your interest to keep the commitment, you keep it anyway. Well, that's, uh, that's Ken Salazar. And uh, Hope, thank you for coming up. Uh, Hope and Ken and, uh, um, and my staff and others have been tired of hearing me brag about Old Newcastle. I don't have the same connection as Old Newcastle. Uh, I didn't get married here like, uh, like Tom did. Martha, no purgatory for you, as we Catholics would say. Straight to heaven. <laughs> Straight to heaven. I mean, there's no, no stopping. Bang. You know, right up. Uh, but... Uh, and by the way, Tommy, I miss doing these events with you, man. I miss doing it. There's no one like you in the country. There's no one like you in the country. And you make I me think proud. That's, good. I'm not sure. that's real good. That that is that uh, that is real good. Um, Tom and, and only Tom can do it in the history lesson uh, that he gave us, which is worthwhile doing. Um, you know, I have only one regret. Um, my middle name, I used to be kidded about it back in the days when uh, the family, my, my family, the big family here in Delaware owned the newspaper. I'd refer, be referred to as Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., the liberal from Scranton, Pennsylvania. I I lived here my whole life. Uh, and, uh, but uh, the Robinettes uh, came over with William Penn. Now, we have a land grant in Chester County that uh, it's now a park, it's uh, over 160 acres. I just wish he'd given us a grant here. Um, and maybe we'd still have, uh, we'd still have some, some, some say. Folks, uh, um, uh, this is a proud moment. This is a proud moment uh, for all of us here in Delaware. Um, and I want to point out that Tom's right. I did start early on. I was determined back in the 70s to get a national park for the state of Delaware, but I just didn't have the uh, the, the foresight that Tommy had. I started off with Cypress Swamp, then and I tried to White Clay Creek, remember? Um, and uh, and uh, so then I, uh, I was thinking, and Tom came up with the idea, and Jim Souls did. We co-sponsored that legislation back in 2004. And actually, uh, uh, it made a whole heck of a lot of sense. Um, we stand here today uh, uh, celebrating uh, what the president signed yesterday, a proclamation uh, creating the first state national monument. And they say, what's the difference between a national park and a national monument? Well, the national monument means it is in the park system, the park runs it, but uh, we still haven't given up, and Tom have not given up on the designation of a national park as well. But um, the reason why this happened at the time it happened uh, was because of uh, Secretary Salazar. Uh, he had made a commitment to Tom and to me, and he came to me about a little over a year ago. He said, look, before I leave, I want to make sure I get this done. There were five designations of national monuments, uh, and he wanted to make sure Delaware wasn't uh, the uh, 495th. He wanted us to be the 400. And, and I just a little way of background. I don't know if you heard, Tommy, yesterday when the president turned to Ken and said, I know, I know, I promised you I would do this. I promised you I would do this. You know what he said to you? And uh, so the reason it got done when it did, because Ken is uh, heading back to Colorado, um, is because uh, he was absolutely determined to keep a commitment that he made to Tommy and to me and 
that this would get done on his watch. Uh, and, uh, you know, I have, uh, Tom and I worked together a long, long time. As Martha maybe still hasn't forgiven me, I spent time trying to talk her into why Tom should run for the United States Senate back in those days, remember? I know I wasn't the most popular guy in the household at that time. And, uh, and uh, why I, Tom spent the night before he announced for Congress in my home uh, while I was uh, being very gentle. I said, Tom, you should run, you should run. And he said, I've already announced for Treasury, I'm going to run. And I said, well, let me put it this way, Tom. I'll do anything I can to help you raise money if you run, and if you don't, I'll never help you again. Uh, and, uh, and so I don't know that has anything to do with it, but the next morning, without telling me, he announced at 10 o'clock in the morning he was running. But uh, I've been a fan of the man, uh, Tom Carper, for a long, long time. He's incredible. The one thing to know about Tommy, and all of you know it, everybody here knows it, that when he gets the bit in his teeth, there is absolutely no stopping it. I really mean no stopping it. I, uh, the fact of the matter is almost every member of the United States Senate, Democrat and Republican, has a story of how Tom Carper has cornered him to talk to him about how important it was to put Delaware in the, make it part of the national park system. And uh, they think that they may be uh, uh, spared now, but he hasn't given up. He hasn't given up, nor have I, and by any way I can help him in making sure we actually get the National Park. Ladies and gentlemen, um, it's been, uh, uh, this is happening today because of Tom Carper. Um, he has been absolutely relentless. As I said, today is a long time in coming, and uh, I, uh, it, 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 it never made sense to me that we didn't get the same recognition to other states because this state is an incredible state, and it really is. I know we, it's chauvinistic to talk this way, but in fact it is. I mean, it's a remarkable, remarkable little state. By the way, there's still five states with populations smaller than ours, by the way. Um, it's a remarkable, remarkable state. The state of Delaware was born just next door uh, in the Newcastle County Courthouse on June 15th. And, as 1776 because uh, on that day we voted to separate not just from Del not just from England but from Pennsylvania um, and uh, that's how we ended up a state 11 years later as Tom pointed out uh, in the Golden Fleece Tavern on the Green in Kent County was decided on December 7th we're going to ratify the Constitution of the United States of America and our history begins though as Tom pointed out uh, uh, well before William Penn, but when William Penn came looking for religious freedom in 1682. And you think about the comments here. You think about how the foresight these guys had, the foresight they had about public open space for the people when there were so few people that were here. It's amazing the foresight they had. And uh, you can still see uh, some of the 18th century Quaker structures in the Woodland property um, and the Brandywine Valley. And I might add uh, that uh, that place is a great example of why I think Delaware is one of the most beautiful places in America. The moments and places aren't just central to Delaware history. These are central to American history. They're central to American history, not just Delaware history. And uh, thanks for the proclamation yesterday, an awful lot of people in this country and around the world are going to be made more aware of that because it is part of the system now. Delaware is going to get the support it needs to preserve these treasures and our kids, our grandkids, our great great grandkids, all of posterity will have the benefit of these, uh, these national monuments. Uh, we'll have park rangers uh, to protect and maintain these sites and uh, when family and school groups come they'll have professionals who are taking them around and explaining all that was done here in this little state. And as we pointed out, I will not take any more time, but as we pointed out, they, so these are also economic engines. They will in fact, will now appear in brochures when foreigners come to visit and visit the park system. It won't just be the Delaware Chamber of Commerce making the case as to how important these monuments are, but it will be made nationally. And so uh, it's, uh, it's one more reason why today is a great day to be a Delawarean. Uh, all you folks in Newcastle take inordinate pride. Those of you who are from Newcastle, you take inordinate pride of being part of this great city. Is that Congressman Tommy Evans out there? Hey, Tommy, how are you, man? 
speaking of great Delawareans, it's good to see you, pal. And uh, so I, uh, um, you have every reason to celebrate, and uh, I, uh, I, uh, I want to thank uh, Ken for uh, keeping his commitment, and I want to thank Tom for his incredible hard work. We owe them both a great deal. God bless you all. Thanks. Good to be home.